Well, let's go through again and make sure that all of these things really match up by using our table. So let's see, what, what does the table say that group A should be absorbing? Where are we there? Uh, are we, so here's our carbon oxygen double bond, but are we in this first example or the second example for group A? Second. I think group A is actually, oh yeah, you're right, group A is the second because it's attached to another carbon chain. So this would predict 2.2 to 2.6. And we're right in the middle of that region, so that seems good. Now, how about where would the table predict that group B would be? Which would group B be? The first case or the second case at the bottom of the left-hand column? First case. Yeah, now we have, we're connected to the carbonyl, but we're not connected to any other carbon chains. So group B should be 2.1 to 2.3. And again, we're just in the right region. Notice how when you're a little bit, we saw last time that substitution with carbon chains pulls you a little to the left. Well, group A is a little bit more substituted than group B, so it got pulled a little bit to the left. And then finally, here we have carbons that are pretty far from any electronegative elements, so we would just expect them to be less than 1.25, and these were pretty far to the right on the number one. How, what would we normally expect these to absorb? Let, let's find the absorption for those CH3 groups. Where's that? Yeah, 0.8 to 1.0. So you, they're a little bit to the left. Yeah, they're not really being affected very much at all by this because they're too far away. So that's always a good step. But the fact is because we have these rules of thumb, we're not reliant on constantly going back to the table over here. We, we can just use this as our general rules of thumb. Does that make sense? Well, again, one lesson is that this takes a lot of practice. These are not easy problems. That's why I'm just demonstrating these right now so we can see the problem solving techniques. Again, the biggest mistake students make is just trying to dive in and take a guess as to the whole structure. Well, you can do that forever, because especially with seven carbons, there's millions of different possible structures. So it's very important instead to try to work out the fragments that each of these peaks represents, and then you try to put them together like a jigsaw puzzle, and you have to take guesses. You have to guess, and if something doesn't work, you try a different guess. Just like when you're doing a jigsaw puzzle, you take a guess as to the pieces that fit together, but if they don't fit together, you just try something else. You have to, oftentimes you have to try a bunch of things before you're gonna get something where the pieces actually fit. We used the fact that these were singlets here. That was helpful to us because we knew each of the groups was not adjacent to any of their hydrogens. 